what is an, an apostle according to the Bible. And Paul's apostleship, as some of you may already know, was in question because the eleven had not ordained him, that he didn't come from the eleven. So some had questioned and doubted whether or not he was an apostle. Uh, but notice what it says here. He says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man. See, he says, he's an apostle, not by man, but by Jesus Christ. Right? By Jesus Christ. And I believe this is the primary biblical definition of where an apostle got his authority, and it was from Jesus Christ. It was the, is somebody that Jesus appointed. They were ordained of God. Now, when it comes to apostleship, I have noticed that there's sort of a, a spectrum of beliefs. Many of you probably know what I'm talking about, but there are people, well, how many apostles were in the Bible? Were there always 12? Were there more than 12? Are there apostles today? And in this spectrum, I believe you have, from one extreme to the other, you have those that say, there are only 12, there could never be more than 12, and the other extreme is, well, there are apostles today. Right? And many of you know about this apostolic movement. It started about 100 years ago. It was a spin-off from a Pentecostal movement. And you know, they teach, of course, you have to repent of your sins to be saved. You gotta stop sinning to be saved, which is works, which is not the gospel. That's a curse, right? But you, you repent of all your sins, and then if you're really saved, we will see the evidence by the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We will see you slain in the Spirit. We will see you speaking with other tongues, which of course most of you know the Pentecostals, it's, just, it's gibberish. They're possessed by a devil, and they're gonna say that's the Holy Spirit. So, I mean, it's strange. And of course, they don't believe in eternal security. They would say, well, of course you can lose your salvation. You can walk away from your salvation. So the apostolic movement is on the, the one extreme of this spectrum. And they're wrong. There are no more apostles today. They do not exist according to the Bible. And we'll show that. But on the other end of the extreme, you have those that say there only can be 12. There were only 12 and there were no more. And there are those on this side of the spectrum that actually uh, say that Paul was not an apostle. You can't read Paul. Paul's a conspiracy. Don't accept his doctrine. It's a different gospel or different dispensation. You know, you have a lot of strange fruit that comes out of that crowd that believes in 12 only. Well, I want to show you according to the Bible that they're both wrong. And we can prove it, believe it or not, just in this chapter. For starters, Paul is saying, I am an apostle according to God. Well, what, what's that make? 13? But look, look at verse number 19. I want you to see verse number 19 in this chapter. Galatians 1, verse number 19. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Uh-oh. You mean Jesus' brother, James, was an apostle also? Because he wasn't one of the twelve, right? So could Paul be an apostle and actually go beyond twelve? Well, that would be thirteen. Fourteen listed right here just in this chapter. And I want to talk about that for a second because, you know, just the fact that it says that James, which most of you know, he was the author of the book of James, but, you know, this also debunks immaculate conception. I was talking with a Catholic this week about that. Well, do you know what immaculate conception is? Oh, yeah, that Mary was a virgin when she conceived. Uh, wrong answer, Catholic. You don't know your own doctrine, right? The Catholic Church says immaculate conception means Mary was conceived of a virgin and she is perpetually a virgin. They've got some strange doctrine around Mary. Most Catholics believe that Mary lived and was always a virgin. She never had any other children. Well, this verse alone would debunk that. It says that Jesus had a brother and his name was James. So James was his brother. So guess what? Mary had at least one other child. Most of you know that I think it's uh, Matthew 13. The one I usually go to is Mark 6, where it, Mark 6 verse 3. It says, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? That's four brothers. And it says, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So they're offended at Jesus. And they're saying, wait, that he's, that's Mary's son. You know, the guy with four other brothers and at least two sisters. So Mary had at least seven children that the Bible proves. Maybe more. It doesn't give us an exact count of the sisters. So James was a, an apostle also. It tells us that. I want you to go, well, actually, in, in 1 Corinthians 15, which is the famous chapter of the resurrection, but it tells us what the gospel is, the death, burial, and the resurrection. Then it says he was seen of 500. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 7, it says, after that he was seen 
of James than of all the apostles. So here again we have James being mentioned as an apostle. But look ahead to Galatians chapter 2, verse number 9. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Now go to Acts chapter 1. So the Bible does teach that there were more than just 12 apostles. But it also would be impossible for you to have any apostles today because they would have had to have seen the Lord Jesus Christ. They would have had to have been picked by God. And Paul was one, it says, out of due season. He was picked by God. It was the will of God that he would go and be a witness, but he was sort of out of time, if you will. He wasn't with the twelve. He was against the church, working for the Jews. He made profit by making havoc of the church. He was getting paid, right? So he was kind of a, an odd fellow to the group of apostles. But people, how many apostles are in the Bible? Well, I can tell you it's more than twelve. I can't tell you the exact number, but I can give you a few examples to help you see a few. So if there's the 12, we know that there was Judas, so minus one, and then we're going to see here where they vote in Matthias, right? And then there's Paul, and we know about James, so we're already at like 13, 14. Look at Acts chapter 1, look at verse number 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. Now, some people believe that the 120 here are disciples or are apostles also. I don't lean that way. I, I could see why they would say that when you reference some other passages, but I don't believe that, but it, it's possible. God can do whatever He wants. So there's 120 others that are mentioned here in the church. You know, and we read uh, this past Sunday, we read Luke chapter 10, where it says that the Lord appointed 70 others also. Those 70, He appointed 12, and then He appointed 70. I believe those 70 probably were apostles. I do believe that. It's possible the 120 and the 70 and the dozen and a few others, you know. God can do whatever He wants. He's not limited to 12. And I don't think we need to be too superstitious about numbers. God uses numbers. Amen. 3, 7, 12, 10. He uses numbers for certain things, but we, we don't need to try to constrain something into a box to make something true, you know, try to force it to be true so that it comes up to a number that works for us. Uh, look at verse number 16 here. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Right? So he's saying David foresaw what Judas would do, and he said that somebody should take his office. Look at verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishop prick, let another take. Now those are quotes from Psalm 69 and Psalm 109, but the bishop prick there, the prick means office, his office of bishop, that office that he held of apostleship, somebody else should take it over, he needs to be replaced. Look at verse 21. Wherefore, all these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, being from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So there's another requirement of being an apostle. First, you know what we saw in Galatians, it has to be of Christ. Christ chooses apostles, right? God, it also said, chose the apostle. Here, they pray and the Holy Spirit reveals to them who to choose, I believe. You know, so they pray, look at verse 26, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now go to Acts chapter 14. Moving forward from here, when it references the 12, I believe it's talking about those 11 plus Matthias. But then we have Paul, who obviously was an apostle. He wrote 14 books of the Bible through the power of the Holy Spirit, so we can't discount him or James, the brother of Jesus. But in Acts chapter 14, we've covered this before, but we'll do it again. Look at verse number 14. Acts 14, 14. Which, when the apostles... Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out. Now go to Romans chapter 16. So there you have Barnabas and Paul both being called 
apostles. What does that mean? Well, they were company. They saw John the Baptist. They saw Jesus work miracles. They probably saw the crucifixion. They definitely saw the resurrection, and now they are witnesses of the resurrection, right? Because when Jesus resurrected, he showed himself to thousands, right? I mean, there were a lot of people that saw him, and so there's a lot of people that he could have chosen to be witnesses and be apostles. Again, remember what he said in Galatians 1, Paul, an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ. So Paul was chosen by Christ, and not everybody believed it, and he sort of had to try to prove himself to some people, but just about every letter he introduced in, he said, hey, I'm an apostle by the will of God. He said, not by, not because I said, hey, I'm an apostle, no, by the will of God. Because God revealed himself and told him what to do. So again, God chooses who he will use as a witness. And, you know, the, the, the acts that we just read, you know, it requires the requirements they showed. I think they agree with that. So there's more than 12, but there are no more today that are eyewitnesses of the resurrection. You're in Romans 16. As they close out this book, look at verse 7. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Now, wow, who's ever heard of the apostle Junia? The apostle Andronicus. Well, here it is, that God is clearly calling them apostles. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. So, Paul, Barnabas, James, Andronicus, Junia, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I think we're like 17, 18 if we're counting, uh, you know, and may, again, maybe those 70 also, maybe the 120, I don't think so, but maybe so. Who's to say otherwise? I don't think you would be in total heresy if you said, well, I think there are hundreds of apostles. Well, it's obvious there's more than 12, right? According, yeah, yeah. no, you got to, we're going to shun you if you don't believe it. <laughs> no, thank God for the liberty we have, right? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse number 6. And these things, brethren... I have in a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. So this is a famous chapter where he says, don't get puffed up for Apollos or don't get puffed up for me against Apollos. Right? He's talking about unity in the brethren here, but he's saying me and Apollos. He's naming the two together. But then look at verse number nine. For I think that God hath set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to the angels, and to men. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So I, I think it's saying that Apollos is also an apostle, somebody that God has chosen to use to be a witness of his resurrection. And again, Paul's introduction to his letters, it often just pointed how Christ, it was his will that he would be a witness. He doesn't take the, you know, he doesn't magnify his office. As he says he points to Christ. He brags on God. In 1 Corinthians 9, we see this where he's talking about his apostleship. Look at verse 1. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have not I seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. He said, listen, I am an apostle, and I, I, God's given this to me, and here I have witnessed to you. And others may doubt me, but you know I'm an apostle, and what's my seal? You are. I witnessed to you, and you got saved. Right? Go back to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. There's others that point to Silvanus and 1 Thessalonians and some others that you could say maybe might be an apostle. Or, uh, there's even some that would say, well, if you go back to the Greek, and look, which we're not going to do any of that, right? I've shown you enough here to actually prove according to the Scripture, there's definitely more than 12. Right? But there's also, it's not possible for anybody to be a witness of his resurrection that have seen Christ before and after. Now, Paul, we have no record of him seeing Christ while he walked the earth for those 40 days, but he certainly did see him when the Lord revealed himself unto him. And it was by revelation that the Lord gave him these commandments. So Paul, as he says, is in due, he was born out of due sea. He's, he's a unique individual that God used because of his zeal and his knowledge of the Jews' religion. His ability to already know what they believed, to now see that, whoa, Christ has come and be ready to fight against those traditions with the gospel.